Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from The Technology Firm. This is going to be an interesting little video. It's going to include Wireshark and a couple of Windows settings. So here's a scenario. Somebody was asking me, uh, how does Windows behave if you have two default gateways? Now you could go and Google it and find all sorts of lovely Microsoft documents explaining how it should work. But I thought, hey, why not? Let's find out how it really works. So what did I do? I went to my computer here. Uh, there's my Ethernet status and if I go to my details you'll see that I have two default gateways you see that the interesting thing I noticed right off the bat was after I typed this in that second one was the one that I used which I thought it would have been the first one so I don't know if that's always going to be the case but that's just what I found uh, the other thing I did let me just close that off is I started pinging Google's DNS and then I captured those packets so that's what I was doing now uh, I think I'll show you one last thing here as far as adding those two default gateways you may be wondering how do you do that because when you go to your IP settings it only shows one default gateway so I'm gonna click advanced and here you can see it says default gateways and then I press add and I added that secondary router alright just obviously make sure it's a router and that's all I did so let's take a look at the trace and I'll show you some tips and tricks with ETH, uh, Wireshark along the way so you can see here I'm pinging me source destination 888 and you can see the MAC address of the destination is my router's MAC address it starts with a 94 that's all we really gotta know and you'll see when it talks back to me the source is 94 so it would be kinda helpful if we have this MAC address as a column so I'm gonna right click on this apply as column and you will see there it is as source So I'm just gonna drag this guy over Whoops, let me try that again. And you can see, uh, there it is. I'm fighting with this. There we go. And you can see there's the source. Now it's kind of more, it's a little more obvious. And I can get rid of that middle pane details. And I always like to get rid of my bytes as well. And you can see the nine fours kind of jump right out at you. And you can see it back and forth, back and forth, and so on and so on. So as you eyeball this, you can see at some point what I did, I went to that router, I literally rebooted it. And you could see there's my reply and now things start to change a little bit you see this right there's a request a request a request no replies because guess what <laughs> it's down right and and this is where the other one steps in so it now goes to that other IP as I as I gave it and it replies and requests and things are good again so we lost three pings if you will but now we can see that MAC address is talking back definitively talking back to me so what I did was I waited, I waited, that router did come back up. It still wasn't using that original router. It just stayed with the one that was working. I thought after a while it would give up. No, it just stayed with that other one. It stayed with the 00, zero router, not the 94 router, if you will. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit, show you what I did. Because as I was reading the Microsoft documentation, it said that it would use this uh, until traffic went to that other original router. So all I did, and this is this is the kind of the funny part of it, I literally just pinged the other router. That's all I did. And that router is 65, right? Dot 65. So you can see here's a ping request to 65. As soon as I pinged it and 65 replied, that's the 94, then bang, I started using that router again. You see that? So this is a great little example on how to use Wireshark to find out how protocols really work. So we found out that, again, my second IP address that I entered was the one that I started using, which again, may or may not always be the case. It was my case. When that router disappears, I go and use the other one, as you saw. And then as soon as I pinged that router that was down, bang, I started using it again. So that's an interesting little uh, example on how to validate and vet the way things should work versus how they do work. So I hope that helped. Have a good day. Bye for now.